Today we're going to have a wide-ranging discussion with Tim Muirhead, the founder and chief investment officer of Arbidon. How did you start your career as a trader? Right, well, it goes back in uh, uh, 1995. I'd just finished my engineering degree and computer science degree at the ANU um, and started working at BHP back then. And um, out of the site sheds, I'd met a couple of guys who were sort of, they got me interested in the stock market and that was back in the day before we had the internet. It was so we'd get the paper each morning, we'd go and uh, ring up for prices, and uh, we started trading options on BHP. Was this alongside your job at, as an engineer? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I guess it was a form of swing trading. Like every uh, few days, we'd realise you know the price had dipped, and we'd buy and would uh, run up and would sell. Not sure if we made any money out of it, but it certainly uh, introduced me. From the BHP experience, where did you go from there? I actually got a job in Thailand. Again, for BHP, they they changed, they spun it off to Blue Scope by then, and uh, I was actually in Ground Zero for the Asian financial crisis. So, oh. that was certainly an interesting experience. And um, I guess that's what really kicked off my trading career because I'd watched the um, the stock exchange of Thailand that was trading at about 1400 and it just kept plummeting day after day going down and it actually got to like 208 and um, I'd been looking at this market thinking I really should be buying into it and it took a while to sort of get it all set up being a foreigner at the time mm -hmm. and by pure luck I, I think I timed the bottom within you know like a week and that year I'd made more money like off the trades than I did working it. And of course I thought I was a genius, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the old mistaking brains for a bull market. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but that's what really, I guess, gave me the, the confidence to quit my job and trade full time. So I started out as a fairly technical trader. I had a background in um, you know, programming, so a lot, of, um, a lot of the stuff I was doing was trying to automate the stock market, which was very similar to automating a steel mill. You're getting a lot of information and mm -hmm. the machine makes you know, decisions in real time and uh, trying to try trade that. I mean, actually the company I founded, Arbidine, which is sort of you know, cyber, Cyberdyne systems from you know, the Terminator movie, trying to, <laughs> again, that has that thematic. Do you remember back then what platform you were using to trade and uh, to Yes, your... so it was uh, probably the old times, remember, uh, Metastock was the uh, yeah, program. And to execute your trades back then, did you uh, Manual, yes, it was yeah. manual and it used to be get on the phone. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then of course like the internet uh, sort of sprung up and that's when you could you know, start putting um, trades in through. Uh, do you remember your first broker that you were using? Ah, yeah, it was probably Comsec, I think so. The trading experience, so you, I mean, you left a career as an engineer to become a trader. Yeah. What is it that's so magical about this trading experience that sucked you in? Um, so, look, I think the, as I said before, I mean, people always say, you know, that they're not in it for the money, but I think if you know, ask most people, you're, you're in it for the money because you can see, if you can outsmart, you know, everyone that it, it's just, it's basically no limit to what you can do um, I guess what I should add is that I was fortunate enough to work for a company that um, they were they were doing basically um, high frequency trading before it was actually called high frequency trading and that was where um, we would um, get links into the actual stock exchange you know and reacting off again reacting off data in real time um, and that was certainly a real lesson for me so I learned a lot about options, um, you know, mm -hmm. all the Greeks, all that sort of thing. I, I, again, I think one of the things about people's trading journeys is the uh, just the fact that you look back and you realise how <laughs> how little you know. But yeah. you, get, you, yeah. you can be successful, you know, if what? you focus on a niche. Would you recommend this to young aspiring traders? I always say to people, um, if you want to become a trader, you, know, you need two things. You need to put away two years' salary because you're probably not going to make anything, yeah. and you need a supportive partner. You know, 95% of people try it and and don't make it. But if you're passionate about it, and you feel like you know this is what you want to do, and you're prepared to work hard, there is there is 101 ways to make money in the markets. Um, most of them are very difficult to find, but if you can work on you know a niche or work on your edge, as we call it, mm. uh, then you can do it. So our style is we 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 basically um, have a global macro framework. So looking at you know all the big major trends, um, and from there we um, then start looking at um, 
like what's moving, for example, copper. If we like copper, we'll start looking at uh, what companies in the copper space we like. So a bit of a top-down view on, on the big, you know, big picture, the sector, and then it, then we'll uh, hone in on sort of various companies. We start uh, doing a deep dive. Can you maybe just take us into your trading room? Like, what what does a day in the life of Tim look like? So I, I say to people too, if you want to, everyone thinks if you want to become a trader, you're your own boss, but you're absolutely not. You're 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 employed by the market. Yeah. So this morning it was 4 a.m. We had the the FOMC meeting. Yeah. Obviously, scan the markets. What's you know, look at the bond market first. We always start with what the bonds are doing. Um, and look at, yeah, obviously the news overnight, what's been happening, um, has there been any uh, significant moves that are a bit out of the order? Uh, it's, look, it, what, I guess what I do like about trading is every day is different. There is, there is always something new. I never find myself doing the same thing. I do look at a lot of charts each day, but I mean, that's sort of something I've always sort of, it's like looking looking for gold, I guess. One of the things we do is we look at different time frames. So I have three time frames up on all my charts and I can just go, you know, flick through them. And which, which time frame? Uh, so I go for, say, probably five year, then I've got like about basically, you know, sub or maybe one and a bit year and then probably four to five months. Okay. And you get, after a while, your brain gets very good. You can fly yeah. through within a second. Yeah. You can say if it's there's something interesting or not. You have a tight relationship with FX trading. Maybe you just want to tell us about that relationship and where it originated. Yeah, sure. And let's say where it's going in the future. Sure. So um, FX trading is obviously an arm of um, the Glen Eagles. So we started working with Glen Eagles. It must have been 2014 now. Um, so I've known... Um, uh, Glen Eagles founder Lance Rosenberg since that time. Also, um, FX Trading's founder Mercury. They're both good, solid people and trustworthy. Um, I've always had a good working relationship with them. I always say it's better to do bad business with good people than good business with bad people. In this case, we can hopefully do good people with you know, yeah. good business. There's a lot goes into launching and running a fund. It's not just the trading. There's the whole marketing side, compliance side, um, onboarding side. We knew we needed a partner. Uh, we needed someone we could trust and we could work well with. So FXT, they were you know, an ideal choice for us. So, If somebody was to invest in your fund, what are the kind of instruments that you'd be trading, symbols, or are you an absolute return fund? Yeah. Yes, so, okay, so absolute, we're an absolute return fund, and just, I guess that means we try and make uh, positive returns in all market conditions. As to what we trade, US, uh, Europe, and Australian stocks, uh, we trade a lot of currencies, we trade bonds, we trade a lot of futures on the commodities, it used to be in, in the old days, you know, if you wanted to trade a particular set like, um, you know, the grain, soft commodities, for example, you needed to, to have a different broker. These days we can do it all in the one system. Mm -hmm. We can look at the risks in the one system, which has been uh, very good. I used to uh, be an options market maker, so trading, you know, probably tens of thousands of options each month. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a really strong understanding about options. and. I guess where people go wrong with options is um, over leveraging. Obviously, you know, as market conditions change, we hope to change with it. We've always thought that you know there's there's always um, sectors moving that, uh, and we're not we're not married to any particular strategy. So we know we you know have to remain nimble and mm -hmm. and always be changing with these markets. So for an almost 30 year veteran, you said you started in '95 trading. So do you want to? To close this interview, do you want to leave us with any passing pieces of wisdom, pearls of wisdom for an emerging trader? If you can find one, one edge in the market and just keep doing that, then you know that's the start of a career. And then over time, you know, you work on more strategies and more strategies. So, uh, and but look, you've got to work hard and uh, you know, stay humble. I think because if you don't, the market will humble you. Yeah. So. Well, Tim, thanks very much for joining us and sharing your wisdom with us. Oh, pleasure.